Hello, this is Sarika. Okay, so <laughs> I think the first comment response to the latest video that I posted on uh, some interesting properties of the Akadua. Uh, yeah, I have the unfortunate tendency of just assuming that everyone who watches any video I make has already seen all the other ones I've made previously. <clears throat> And even though there's only five videos in my Akadua playlist, uh, it's wrong for me to assume that you've just watched that video. Plus, it's old, and I should have been I should have remade it a long time ago. Um, oh God, dang it! Here it goes again. I hate these things. You there I go in and out of reality. Okay, so I also posted a, a video which I think I'm going to take down because actually I'll do that. Um, it was called Introduction to My Book on the Ikadua because <clears throat> uh, it does not, well, it was a, it was a weird introduction and, and even people said on that introduction, um, uh, you don't explain enough, you know? So, <laughs> I have been possessed by something, the Akadua, I suppose, and my real feeling that I am supposed to write this book, it, it hadn't been uh, flowing out of me uh, previously, but when I really started talking about it and dealing with it, then all of a sudden it was like apparent to me, oh yeah, I am supposed to write this book. So, I have a new intro. It's long. <clears throat> it's even longer than it was before. Okay, you know, and then there are some other things that it's it's not it's not finished. Obviously, you know, this is a work in progress, but I'm just going to read it, and I think this will explain some things better. <laughs> I started writing last night about the Akadua and the seven chakras, and how they um erg, oh lame, well pretend like I didn't see that. Um, and it turned into suddenly like, I'm gonna write this other thing. And I just started like writing and writing and writing and writing. <clears throat> and then I realized that I had this other introduction, which wasn't very good, and other people asked me questions about. And I combined the two, and this is what I have now. All right, so what is the Akadua? That's what I imagined if somebody picks up this book and it's like, ah, the Akadua, alchemical agent of awakening. What does that mean? It sounds like something I would be interested in. What is the Akadua? <clears throat> yes! Given that I'm writing a book about it, you'd think that this would be a rather easy question to answer. It's not. My journey with the Akadua as I'm writing this started five years ago, and I'm still discovering more about it every day. <clears throat> I've probably written more about the Akadua in those five years than I have about psychedelics, boys, my drinking problem, my failed relationship, or my other spiritual practices. It is part of the mystery, capital letters, and knowing it as such serves to, small, to solve a small piece of that mystery. Here is what the Akadua is supposed to be. A rarefied, plasma-like, alchemical substance originating from the sun that was used in the time of Atlantis for transformation, healing, and sustenance, subsequently carried to other parts of the world, mainly Egypt and South America, in the Atlantean diaspora. It was used in Egypt in the oldest and the most powerful rituals, but faded into obscurity. In South America, it was kept and used by shamans who passed it to their apprentices in secret until the modern era when it was deemed necessary to offer it to the masses in an effort to smooth the transition of the planet during this potentially cataclysmic time. In 2007, a man of knowledge, or shaman, Coyote the Blind, who had previously been gifted the Akadua by one of his teachers, decided that it was time to offer it to the world. The small number of people began to be attracted to it, took the transmission, and began working with it. Until a few workshops were held, pretty much the only instruction Coyote gave us was, activate it, now notice how it changes the things around you. The Akadua is said to be one-seventh of the actual substance used in Atlantis, called the Zro, and as such has a sevenfold nature expressing itself in seven varieties, obsidian, 
lunar, volcanic, solar, oceanic, atmospheric, and the unnamed. There is also a shadow energy, the eclipsing of solar by lunar, which is called jaguar, but it is considered to be a subvariety of solar. These different forms of the Ikadua are variations of the expression of the ultimate substance, of the same ultimate substance. Just as vital energy runs through the meridians and chakras of the body, taking on different qualities of hot and cold, wet and dry, and so on, the Ikadua undergoes the same type of alchemical processes as it seeks to perfect itself, and that's what that which it inhabits, expressing itself in the seven varieties. The Ikadua is a physical substance that resides within the body, within the heart, and can be activated or manipulated to expand throughout the physical and energetic systems of the body, causing profound changes to them. Our bodies consist of various types of energy, sexual energy, emotional energy, mental energy, and the Ikadua is like the alkahest, the universal solvent, breaking down the lower vibrational forms of these energies and purifying them. A concrete example of this is when feeling great anger, one can learn to feed that anger to the Ikadua, and the Ikadua will absorb it, dissolve it, and purify it bringing one into a unique emotional space where the anger may still be present, but in a purified form that is no longer detrimental to you or the people around you. It can then be applied to methods of manifestation or simply released. I know that's a really loaded concept, you know, and that's why this is supposed to be just an introduction. I might, yeah. Anyway, beyond that, the Ikadua has physical effects on the physical body. When I first received the Ikadua, this is absolutely true, uh, I even just checked my journals, <laughs> I was having some type of panic attack or anxiety disorder every morning upon waking. As soon as I gained consciousness, reality would seize my heart, my physical heart, like a vice. It would start beating frantically, and as a result, I found it nearly impossible to get out of bed every morning. After I received the transmission, these events completely stopped. Through work with the Ikadua, we gain an extra layer of protection, an extra polish, a galvanization of our physical and energetic systems that is difficult to achieve on our own. People are either drawn to the Ikadua or they aren't. It has a pull that speaks to a certain breed of us on an almost cellular level, like the sound of the beating of the drums of our ancestors still pulsating through our blood. If you're meant to have it, the Ikadua will find you. However, there is little to no information out there about the Ikadua at the time of my writing this. Google it and you'll probably see my picture pop up on YouTube. Google Reiki and you'll be bombarded with so much conflicting information it'll make your head spin. The Ikadua has the power to heal, to the power to manifest, the power to shift your locus of awareness, no, your locus of the perception of reality, and the power to help you ascend or awaken. that in there. <clears throat> there are plenty of, plenty of energies out there. Plenty of modalities to choose from if you're a spiritual seeker. Power seeker, magician, fringe dweller, or new age groupie. All of them have a certain amount of merit, power, and divinity, but the Ikadua is different. Well, I was saying here the Ikadua kicks ass, but I guess I'm just going to delete that. I guess it's a little crass. But the Ikadua is different. Plus it leaves a little mystery for later. <laughs> now, um, this is pretty much where my original introduction started, so if you watched my video on my introduction to my book on the Ikadawa, this is where that original introduction pretty much started, so if you, you might have heard this part already. I go into this long description explanation of why I think Reiki is outmoded, or why I think it became sort of polluted, not as an energy, but as a system because Westerners is crazy. Um, <clears throat> I may or might, may not include this section in it, because it, 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 it talks about Reiki for so long, it's like, well, are you talking about the Ikadua or what? You know what, I'm just going to skip it. Um, yeah, it's, it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> Basically, I just say, uh, Reiki is chi. Reiki is universal chi, universal ki. That's what Reiki means, rei ki, you know? Uh, and in, in, in so being, it is not that special 
uh, Qigong practitioners have been working with that energy as long as they've been working with energy. We take in energy from the heaven and the earth in order to survive. Um, I actually, I, I added a new paragraph, and, and that's exactly what I was saying. Uh, practitioners of Qigong, originally Tao, Yin, and other energetic arts such sciences, have been pulling energy from the earth and heaven and storing it up inside their bodies for longer than these practices have existed as such. Uh, indeed, according to this philosophy, this is how we continue living. And if our personal stores of energy are depleted and we do nothing to bolster those reserves by taking in energy from our surroundings, we become ugly, ill, and die. Uh, and that's true. Um, these practices of energy, work, or whatever are not just to get a little healthier or whatever. They, were, they are paths to Buddhahood. They are paths to enlightenment. They are paths to immortality, as some of the alchemists thought. <clears throat> and something like Reiki, um, what I really wanted to highlight here is the difference between using a Reiki system and using an alchemical system like the Ikatua, because Reiki is just universal energy, and as such, it is easily misconstrued because people started to pull this energy into them they start thinking that it's like some weird special divine gift and it is in some sense you know or at least it was but really it's just universal chi and that's nothing special the system is something special the ability of a master to give you the ability to pull that divine energy through your body at will or to have it just miraculously appear from your hands or whatever uh, was not so easy before it is easier now okay uh, and so in that sense reiki i think is a little bit outmoded um and it's different from a system like like the ikadua <laughs> you know, it's obviously I've got a lot going on here, and I'm not exactly sure I'm going to put it. <clears throat> Let me continue. The Ikadua is not universal energy. The Ikadua is something different. It cannot simply be tapped into and pulled out of thin air like chi. Like that better. <clears throat> How it came into existence isn't really known, but, as previously mentioned, it is supposed to have its origin in the sun. As plants absorb the energy of the sun, so do we, and it is my theory that people, human or otherwise, over centuries and centuries of practice, pulled a specific form of energy out of the sun and stored it up in their bodies. This energy was then nourished, cultivated and refined until it became a self-sustaining super-concentrate, the Akadua. It is for this reason that the Ikadua must be passed directly from teacher to student, or master to apprentice, although I always hesitate to use the word master. Perhaps one day, when the Ikadua permeates the air we breathe and the earth pulsates with it as it does its own precious life blood, humans will learn to pull it directly from our surroundings into our bodies, store it up, and work with it that way. Until then, it is necessary to receive it from someone. It is a physical substance, you know, it's not just a master clearing your channels so that you can pull universal energy or chi or ki, ray ki, from the air or the ether. Some people tell me that they have experiences sensing or activating the akadua without taking the transmission. One may be able to tune in to the akadua's nature or to the matrix being created or to the matrix of Akadua created by all those who activate it around the world and have an experience. But this is not the Akadua itself. One cannot self-attune to the Akadua. It physically, physically resides in the heart of the practitioner. And during a transmission, the ultimate substance of the Akadua is passed. I put that in italics, ultimate substance. That's the second iteration of that phrase, and it'll probably be there again. Is passed from one to the other. Uh, what we feel as the seven varieties, which I described earlier, obsidian, lunar, solar, etc., uh, is not the Akadua itself. Are not the Akadua themselves. <laughs> I know how to English. <laughs> 
In fact, they are radiations of the Ikadua interacting with physical matter, us, our physiology, our mind, our emotions, etc. With time and practice, the practitioner will be able to radiate all of these seven varieties at will and any combination thereof. This is where it may be a little fractured. One of the goals of Taoist internal alchemy, Nei Dan, is to convert essential, the essential form of natural bodily energy, Jing, into the vital form of natural body energy, Qi, and then into the spiritual form of natural body en bodily energy, Shen. There are other schools of thought on the exact nature of this process, but inherent in it is the mixing and refining of these energies to create the so-called elixir of life. You can think of the Ikadua as an elixir of life created by the ancients to help you with the process of refining your own body's energies. This process extends far beyond the energies of the body, Jing, Qi, and Shen, as well, transmuting old karmic garbage into power and light, or emotion, anger, etc., like I said before. The priests and shamans of old did the hard work for you, the fermentation and the distillation. All you have to do is drink. And practice. Now, the student of Esoterica will immediately realize that Coyote's story of the origin of the Ikadua is lifted from Crowley. In his book, Liber Something, The Lost Continent, I, I know what I'm talking about, I just haven't looked up the exact reference, Crowley describes a number of freaky attributes of the Atlanteans and the activities in which they engaged, and among those is a mysterious substance called the Zro. Through my YouTube channel, people have been kind enough to point out that Zro in Hebrew means sperm. And if you know anything about Crowley, you know that he was particularly obsessed with Kabbalah and sex, among other things. How much of Crowley's tale is a pure fabrication and how much of it is based in truth is impossible to know, assuming for a moment you actually believe Atlantis is some sort of antediluvian utopia actually existed. I tend to believe, like much of his work, that he was simultaneously ch channeling and fabricating this information as he went along. A ka dua, in quotes, is the first phrase inscribed on the e Egyptian stele of revealing, as it is called by Thelemites, and translated by Crowley as unity uttermost shown. I can only imagine that Coyote, being extremely versed in Thelemic lore, deemed this an appropriate appellation given the tendency of the Ikadua to dissolve, refine, and unite, and began calling it that, Akadua. According to him, shamans in the Toltec lineage, which is the line, which is the line he comes from, doesn't sound right, who have been working with the Ikadua for centuries simply called it power. Okay. <laughs> this is long. Okay. <laughs> Wild wonder and speculation as to the origins of this powerful substance may here come to an end. It doesn't... Semicolon. See how serious I am? It doesn't matter where this substance came from. It is here, now, extremely powerful, relevant, and useful. We can blithely say to the Ikadua, Baby, I don't care what you did in the past. All that matters is that we're together now. And sexiness ensues. If your curiosity as to the true origins of the Ikadua is insatiable, even after diligently working with it, I suggest that you work with it more and ask it where it came from. End of story. <clears throat> okay, this is where I, I haven't done so much uh, editing. I still got time though. I guess it still works. The Akadawa can be thought of as another healing modality like Reiki, Ilahinur, etc. with at least one important difference. The Ikadua is a physical substance. It is somewhat like invisible plasma. Excuse me. I have coffee breath. Uh. It moves slowly. It feels thick and quite real. All other energy healing modalities known to me... ...involve subtle slash spiritual energies that are typically quite, typically quite light, vibrationally high and often more difficult to sense. 
Also the Akadua with its unique form of consciousness. I don't like that. I'll just say also the Akadua has the unique tendency to devour and grow. Devour sounds a little strong. I'll say absorb and grow. Yeah. You can feed it thought, pain, anger, etc., and it will transform it and grow more powerful. Perhaps because of this tendency, it also has the ability to imitate any other type of energy. Once you're skilled enough, you can tell it to imitate Diksha, and it will. Or anything. Um, okay. Um, not going to say that. Uh, the process of receiving the... The process of receiving... Somebody asked this on my last video. The process of receiving the Akadawa is simple. The process that occurs after this is more complicated. People ask me what to accept, expect. I can only give you an idea of what may occur. It's different for everyone. What occurs and how it occurs depends on depends very much on your physical body. If you're energetically plugged up, if you don't sense energy very well, if you're dull and listless and eat hamburgers every day, you're not going to experience much of anything for a while. You'll probably get frustrated and put the Akadua on the back burner and promptly forget about it. Just another new agey activation I got one time. If you're relatively energetically clear, if you've got a good diet and good energy levels and notice when you walk into a room whether it has good or bad energy or something similar to that experience, you'll probably immediately sense something after receiving the transmission. Usually people tell me they're aware of a very subtle stillness, a calm moving through them and that they feel more grounded. That is the Akadua. That is how it feels at first. Subtle, still, old, wise. After I receive the transmission, I s oh goodness, here I go again. I started getting all kinds of information about the Akadua. I put that in quotes because I no longer think about the I think about those perceptions of it, and I no longer care. They don't matter. But I, uh, but I had the sense that it was ancient, wise, and very, very deep. Sometimes I get a little too emphatic. <laughs> At least one other person I know has experienced the exact same thing. Experienced it the same way, initially. Uh, then I began to experience many uh, other odd perceptions. This is a confusing time. Yada freakish mata. Um, This is like this is this is more going into a different part of my book, which I actually want to call my story with the Akadua, my you know beginning experiences of it, which will be the next chapter. This is still the introduction, so um, well, I guess I can still include it. Many odd perceptions. I would get flashes of old healer women, native peoples, with pained expressions on their faces and ready clothes. I started to sense energies from other people more strongly. I began to experience magnetic pushes and pulls at different times and different places in response to different people. Sometimes I would walk by someone and feel cold, hot, sometimes buzzing, etc. A lot of you can experience or have experienced these same sensations going through ascension symptoms, whether or not you're. Uh, you know, participating in some type of specific energy work like the Akadua or Reiki or whatever or Diksha or anything. A lot of people experience the same things and so it was a little difficult to distinguish what was the Akadua and what was not but I can only put it into those terms. I got the Akadua and then the stuff started to happen more frequently. But it also was a time in which I was actively working with energy much more readily and intensely so it follows therefore that I would have more of those experiences correct yes correct um, this is a confusing and stimulating time for me and I wrote voluminously during it I wasn't sure of the true nature of what I was experiencing but that didn't stop me from speculating wildly with ideas about blah 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 yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll, I'll read it. <laughs> sorry. I'm, so, I'm just like, I'm trying to figure out, like, is this supposed to go in my introduction or not? But it, it actually personalizes it a little more, so. <sighs> and 
end scene. All right, settle stainless, blah, 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 blah. Confusing time for me, but limitlessly wrote. I came up with some really interesting ideas during the initial time that I first received the Akadua. Connecting to the Akadua to detailed systems of alchemy, the chakra system, detailing the effects and sensations of different combinations of the seven varieties, which I'm capitalizing, and on and on and on. And on. This was my process, and eventually the Akadawa would go to such intensity and purity that I would pretty much forget about all of it. To define anything is to cage it, to limit its flow, and the Akadawa loves to flow. It's for this reason that I try not to tell people too much after giving them a transition and I transmission, and I imagine it's the same reason Coyote never told us much either. When I started my journey with the Akadua, I was brimming with passions for it. What would happen uh, if, uh, if instead of just healing in a circle, we made different combinations of different people and varieties standing around the Heali? What if we intend to activate the Akadua in the past or the future? Since the Akadua is a physical substance, substance, can it be used up? After giving us a formula to work with activating the seven chakras with the Akadu, activating each of the seven chakras with the Akadua, I asked Coyote what would happen if we activated each chakra with each corresponding variety of the Akadua. He said, "Good. Let me know how that goes." Part of his whole thing during that entire period was this has never been done before. So many people have not had the Akadua at one time in our human history, or the history of this planet, I don't think, at least. Um, and that we would be creating the new maps. So he didn't care if we took the Akadua and called it Higgly Piggly Schmiggly, you know, and, and said that there were 17 varieties of it and whatever. If that's what we discovered, then that's what we discovered. His job was to give it to the masses and then, like a very sexy virus, <laughs> a very healing virus, if there can be such a thing, it uh, replicates and gets passed on to everybody else as it sees fit in and of and for itself. <clears throat> Activate the Akadua. That is all. It will do the rest. It needs attention and intention to be activated, but it doesn't care for mental energy too much. Find your focus, find a point where your mind is certain that you are activating the Akadua and you are activating the Akadua. Assuming, of course, you've taken the, the transmission and have it. I don't want people to get, you know, confused. Uh, I'm not sure you're confused already anyway. Don't focus on a variety or where it's coming from. See, this shouldn't be in the introduction anyway. Or where it's going. Intend, attend, and pay attention. That's all. Just attend. Attend, intend, attend, attention. Is it, it's all there. Remain in that state, alert, expectant, and focused. See, blah, blah, blah. See I was getting all fancy and stuff. And, yeah. That's all you need. Dun, dun, dun. I started, um, I'm going to have another section in here, uh, my Akadua journals, and in my book I'm going to uh, give straight from my journals my experiences writing about the Akadua. Which program do I have? I'm supposed to work in it. Naturally! Gah! Um... um uh, yeah, my initial experiences with the Ikadua, and I, I wrote so much about it, which is like, it's a wonder that I can't just pull from that and put it in my book, you know? But I am going to do that, I might just include it in like an appendix section or something like that. And, um, let's see, I started making sort of an outline, or at least, uh, the, what do you call it, the index for it. Just a couple things, my journey with the Akadua, and will be like subcategories, how the Akadua found me, initial experience with the Akadua, true opening, level 3 plus, uh, chapter 2, the Akadua, tran Akadua transmission, beginning practice, um, experiences, you know, intermediate practice and advanced practice, different techniques through all of that will be included in the book, um, relaxation techniques, 
not breathing so much actually, but yeah, different things and different ways to use it. Using it with symbols, using it with mudras, using it, using it with, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So I have a lot to write about. Now you understand why it's so difficult to do. <laughs> I am a writer, but I'm not a person who's ever written a book. You know, it's like there's so much that goes into it. I have so much respect for people who actually do this for a living. It's insane. Especially when you're talking about something that is continually unfolding in one's own experience, you know, which is why I do intend to include journal entries and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I have to go, but um, I hope that helps to define what the Ikadawa is a little bit better and uh, give you more of a sense or a taste of what my book is supposed to be about, is going to be about. And if you have more questions, please post them below. Also included in the description of this video shall be a link to my website, which does not have that much information on it, uh, and relatively nothing about my book, but it does have good information on the Ikadua. Uh, also, my healing services are included therein. Uh, that'll be naona.com slash healing, but you'll find a link down below in the description of this video. It said four, and if you wish to contact me, it's sadaka at naona.com, not on YouTube or anything like that. And I will put my email address down there as well. Thank you for not saying anything about my hair. All right, goodbye.